Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm Emma. And I'm Jenny. And we're, and we're Channel 8, 8 News. Are you guys ready for the big football game? I think someone's doing a report on football. Let's listen to Grayson for an NFL report. Have you wondered how football started? Well, football started way back when. Did you know the first football game was actually a college game? It was in 1869. The teams were the Rutgers versus the Princetons, with the Rutgers winning 6-4. to four. Eventually, more teams were made. For example, there are the Minnesota Vikings, Buffalo Bills, and the Houston Texans. Harvard students love playing rugby and soccer. One day, the students combined both sports and football was created. After the Civil War ended, the moder modern version of sports started to come into shape. Many colleges started to play, and because so many colleges joined in, a league was created called college football. Later, the pro league started in 1920. One year later, the name got changed to the National Football League, or for short, the NFL. In 1960, another league was created called the American Football League. Both leagues eventually joined under the name NFL. The NFL was very, very popular, so popular that a special game was created. It was called the NFL Championship. Today, you may know it as the Super Bowl. Football is the most famous game in sports history. The world of football was blowing everyone's mind. Interested in getting into a football game? Well, you're in luck. Football is played all over the United States. There are a total of 32 American football teams. I mean, I'm honest, I'm pretty surprised how they came up with all those names. The next time you watch a game, think about its history and all the changes these sport of football has experience. My name is Grayson Devine, now back to you in the studio. Wow, thanks for teaching us all about the NFL. I think I'll watch the game tonight. Hey, are there any NFL's, NFL players that you want to know about, Jenny? I think Jillian has some information on one amazing player. Let's hear from her now. Today I'm going to talk to you about tight end Rob Gronkowski. Gronk was born May 14, 1989. He was born in Amherst, New York, and was raised in Williamsville. Rob has four brothers and is the second youngest. Rob has always loved playing football. When he was a kid, he and his brothers would play football in the basement when they couldn't go outside. Rob went to the University of Arizona. When he went, or he went for a business major, he set a record for catching more touchdowns than any other tight end in the school's history. Gronk was drafted to the Patriots in 2010. Rob was on the Patriots, then the Buccaneers in, two, in 2020. He was number 87 on both teams. Gronk made $8 million with the Buccaneers in a year. Gronk broke his left arm in 2012. Rob needed an operation on his arm, then his mm, then needed more operations on his back and right knee in 2013. Gronkowski took some time off to get better. When he came back, he worked hard and got back on the field. Gronk has made this world such a better place. Gronkowski has a charity for kids to be active. He is also an actor. You've probably seen him in USAA commercial. He also loves to help kids in the hospital. Gronk is so nice and helpful, we start helping too. I think Gronk is a great person and a magnificent athlete. Back to you in the studio. Well, I have never played football, but I played basketball. But didn't you fall and hit your head? <laughs> I think Nate has a report on a basketball player. Let's go to Nate for some information on Kobe Bryant. Hi, I'm Nathan Romano. Are you a basketball fan? If so, I bet you heard of Kobe Bryant. He was born on August 23, 1978. His parents are Natalia Bryant and Joe Bryant. Kobe Bryant nicknames are Kobe Bean or Bryant. Kobe was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Kobe Bryant and his wife had a daughter named Gianna. Kobe Bryant passed away on January 26, 2020 due to an unfortunate helicopter crash. His life was taken too soon, but his legacy lives on. Kobe has had a pretty crazy career. Kobe was 17 when his parents signed the contract and joined the NBA at 18. 
Bryant played with Magic Johnson and Shaquille O'Neal on the Lakers. He never played with Michael Jordan, but he was like his younger brother. They're so close. He plays for the LA Lakers in Los Angeles, California. He retired in 2016 after scoring 60 points in his last game. As you can see, he has had a pretty impressive career. Here are some of Kobe Bryant's awards. Kobe averaged about 23.3 points per game in the 2014-2015 season. Kobe Bryant has won the NBA a finals MVP award twice. Isn't that crazy? Kobe also led the NBA in scoring twice. In case you didn't know, leading in scoring means that he had more points than anyone in the NBA. All in all, the best way to describe him is a GOAT 2.0. Back to you in the studio. Well, I'm pretty sure he hasn't hit his head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ha ha, Ashley. Whoa, did she just do a backflip? Hey, that reminds me. Ashley, you have a report to give on Simone Biles, the Olympic gymnast, right? Yeah, let me tell you all about her. Hi, I'm Ashley Clark. Today I will be reporting you on Simone Biles. Simone's childhood was very complicated. Simone Biles is a world champion gymnast. Wow, that probably took a lot of training. She was born on March 14, 1997 and lives in Columbus, Ohio. A glimpse of her talent began when Biles moved with her sister to Spring, Texas to live with her grandparents. Biles went on a field trip with her daycare to a gym and just started flipping. Little did she know, but in, two th but in 2013, she would be named world champion gymnast. A few la years later, she backed up her champion title when she did a flip almost seven feet in the air. That's crazy for only being four foot eight. Needless to say, Simone was a star right from the start. How much time does Simone train for? Well, I've got the answer for you. Biles moved to a different gym in 2015 called World Champion Center, located in Spring, Texas. That's where most champions go to train. She would spend seven hours of her day training, one hour of warm-up, five hours of events, and one hour of conditioning kept her busy for the full seven hours. Did you know that her favorite event is the floor exercise? Simone liked the floor because of the flipping she could do. Fun fact, that's why I like the floor too. As you can see, it takes a lot of work to be a world champion. Being an Olympic athlete and a world champion can be very stressful. Early in 2021, Biles had a state competition. She fell so many times she didn't get any medals. Shortly, she made an announcement on social media that she was taking a break from gymnastics. Her reasoning, she needed to take care of herself. Her fans, friends, and family were devastated that Simone needed to take care of herself, her jitters. This won't be the last we see of Biles. When she feels better, she will compete again. I can't wait till she starts back up again. Hope you learned more about Simone Biles. Back to you in the studio. Hey, my aunt's friend is a gymnast, and she just got a disease that turned her hand black. That sounds like the Black Plague, a de deadly disease from the old times. Aiden has a report on the Black Plague. Let's see if we can find out more for your aunt's friend. Have you ever heard of the Black Plague? The Black Plague was a pandemic that made your hand black and spread across Europe in the year 1347. People think the plague started in Asia when 12 trading ships were returning to Europe. There were black rats living in these ships. The rats were carrying a bacteria called Yersinia pestis that lives in the bloodstream of the rat. Fleas that were on the rats would bite people and give the bacteria to the people. People on the ship started to get sick. Sailors that were driving the ships were the first to ever witness the plague. Why were they called black rats? The reason why is because when the rats kept on killing people, they became bigger. When they were becoming bigger, they were changing color and they were laying big eggs with blood and pus and that was causing the sailors to suffer. The Black Plague lasted for five years. More than 20 million people died. It was so sad that so many people who had this disease died. The nickname of the Black Death is called the Pestilence. Why was it called this? In Kiev, Russia, they called it this. They didn't have food and water to survive. Later, food prices dropped, which was harder for people to survive. That was the story of the pandemic that was called the Black Death. The plague finally ended in 1353, but it still goes on till this day. and goes on in Africa, Asia, and South America, and Western North America. On average, seven cases per year in North America. Now back to you in the studio. Wow, that was sad. So many people died. And I wonder if anything happened from that time. Hey, wait, didn't fairy tales happen start about that time? Yeah, so. I think so. And didn't Jenny have a report on fairy tales? Yes, I do have a report on fairy tales. Let me tell you all about them. Hello, I'm Jenny, and I have a question for you. 
Have you ever read a fairy tale? Well, I love fairy tales, and they're there for a couple reasons. They're there to entertain us and to teach us lessons. An example of one of those lessons is from the fairy tale, The Fisherman and His Wife. It is meant to teach us not to be greedy, as are many other fairy tales. Over time, though, the morals are sometimes forgotten. Many people, myself included, probably couldn't tell you the moral of the princess and Pete. It's very sad that these magical stories are losing the lessons they were created to teach. These fairy tales lessons shouldn't be lost to history. It's thanks to these morals we have fairy tales. As you can see, there is a reason the writers of the past, like the Brothers Grimm, Hans Christian Andersen, Charles Perlot, and many others, told and wrote these fairy tales other than just to entertain us. Where in the world do these fairy tales come from? And what do they have in common? Well, you'll find they come from all around the world. The famous authors, the Brothers Grimm, wrote stories based on the history of Germany, while Hans Christian Andersen wrote in Denmark. Charles Perlot was in France while writing. Fairy tales have also originated from Gr Egypt and Greece. The Greek and Egyptian myths were all about mighty gods and beautiful goddesses. Some attributes of the myths and immortals were turned into the fairy tales we see today. What makes a fairy tale a fairy tale is magic, a hero or heroine, and a problem or villain. A magical object like a mirror, boots, caps, wands, swords, brooms, and common heroes and heroines are princes and princesses. Women's are villains are commonly wicked witches, jealous fairies, and evil stepmothers. As you can see, fairy tales come from all over the world, but are connected by the magic in them and the magic of the writing itself. What are common fairy tales anyway? Some fairy tales you may have heard of already because of Disney. Common fairy tales by the Brothers Grimm that you might know are Little Red Riding Hood, Snow White, Hansel and Gretel, Rumpelstiltskin, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, and Rapunzel. Others by Hans Christian Andersen are The Little Mermaid, The Ugly Duckling, Thumbelina, The Snow Queen, and The Princess and the Pea. Still more by Charles Perlot are Mother Goose and Puss in Boots. So as you can tell, fairy tales have been around a long time. In conclusion, I hope you learned something about fairy tales today and teach it to others. Fairy tales should, be, should continue to be told long into the future. My name is Jenny, and that's all from me. Back to you in the studio. Wow, I didn't know some of that about fairy tales. Yeah, I often wish I lived in a fairy tale as a princess with my trusty sidekick. Hey, Emma, don't you have a report on dogs? Australian Shepherds, actually, but yeah, let's jump right into it. Hi, I'm Emma, reporting to you on Australian Shepherds. Australian Shepherds are the perfect dog for many reasons. Australian Shepherds are mammals. This dog breed group is called a herding. The average height of a male is 20 to 30 inches, and female average height is 18 to 20 inches. Wow. A baby shepherd is called a pup, puppy, or whelp. Shepherds are also known as ussies. These dogs can live up to 13 to 15 years, and they can have up to 6 to 9 puppies. Their bodies can tolerate hot and cold weather. Are you starting to like Australian Shepherds now? Are you looking for the perfect dog? I have the breed for you. Australian Shepherds have a weatherproof coat of fur and love working the land and wrangling livestock or running the trails with their owners. These dogs are very intelligent. They are good at all sports and jobs. Shepherds only need occasionally brushing while they are shedding. Ussies can be outside for hours. The dogs love children and are very friendly with other dogs too. So if you get this dog, you don't have to worry about them getting along with others. The most popular dog breed, Ussies, can be found all over the world. The Australian Shepherd lives in the United States, Europe, and Spain. This dog breed was officially recognized for being easily trained by their owners by the Kennel Club in 1993 and as of 2020. That is where all Australian Shepherds live in the world. As you can see, the Australian Shepherd is such a great dog. Have I convinced you to get one for yourself? I'm Emma. Back to you in the studio. Hey, what's your favorite animal? Mine's a dog. Mine's a cat. Mine's a red panda, but I hear Olivia's is a polar bear, and she has a report to give on them. Take it away, Olivia. Hi, I'm Olivia. Today I'm going to be talking about polar bears. Where do I start? Polar bears have a cold home. Can you guess Antarctica? Let's see. Polar bears would probably have a hard time staying warm, right? Well, I'll tell you that they don't. Their bodies help them stay warm. They store lots of fat in their body. Also, they have a thick, fluffy white coat. You're probably like, are you serious, a coat? I am serious. Their body fur acts like a blanket on their body. They have wide padded feet. Polar bears spend all day and night on ice. 
If you ever step into the cold ocean and it's freezing and you step on the hot sand, it feels better. This is what pad the, the padded feet feel like on the polar bear. Feels like on the polar bears. So if you ever wondered why they stay warm in such cold weather, there's your answer. Do you know where most Arctic animals live? Polar bears live in cold places. They swim in icy waters, walk on icebergs, snow, and other chilly areas. Polar bears also sleep on ice. If you have a map laying around, open it up, you'll see white spots. Have you ever seen a Dalmatian? That's what the spots look like. It's Antarctica. Polar bears live near cold oceans. The oceans get so cold, the average is around two degrees below zero. Antarctica gets between 28 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit. There, as you can see, the animals definitely need all sorts of adaptation to survive the harsh condition. Polar bears have an important and strict diet. They are part of the Arctic food chain. They are very important to the food chain because they help keep animal pollutions down. They hunt seals and whales. Polar bears also eat reindeer, small rodents, seabirds, waterfowl, fish, eggs, vegetation, including kelp, berries, and even human garbage. Back to you in the studio. Wow, I've heard so many interesting facts on so many topics. I feel like my head is going to explode. <laughs> well, anyway, that's all from us at Channel 8 News. Channel, Channel 8, 8 News out! Welcome to New Hampshire News. I'm Connor. And I'm Ishmael. Isn't it a great day to learn about weather? It sure is. Why don't we give it up to Alexis to learn more about hurricanes? Hi, I'm Alexis and I'll be talking about hurricanes. Have you ever wondered how hurricanes are formed? Well, hurricanes form when warm ocean water evaporates. Water warmer than 80 degrees Fahrenheit is best for hurricanes. The warmest ocean water lies near the equator, which is perfect for hurricane forming weather. The warmer the water, the faster the winds move. Hurricanes get their energy from heat and can reach widths of hundreds of miles wide. Once they reach land, they lose power and die. All in all, hurricanes are very intense storms that should be taken seriously. How dangerous are hurricanes? Hurricanes are very powerful storms and have winds of at least 74 miles per hour. Winds must stay above this speed for one minute or more to be called a hurricane also called typhoons or tropical storms. These storms can tear up the earth and anything growing from it. The worst hurricane in history is Hurricane Katrina. She killed 1,000 people, cost about $108 billion, and destroy destroyed more than 275,000 homes. In conclusion, hurricanes are very destructive and deadly. Do you know when and where hurricanes are formed? The Atlantic hurricane season runs through June to November. The biggest hurricane danger to the U.S. is mid-August to late October. Hurricanes are named in ABC order starting with the first hurricane of the season and alternate male and female names. Luckily, hurricanes are predictable which help people prepare for the arrival of storms. Hurricane Mitch hit Central America in 1998 and in 2005, Katrina first struck Mississippi, then hit Louisiana. As you can see, hurricanes are very amazing and powerful storms and need to be respected. Now back to you in the stu studio. I never knew that hurricanes could be that interesting. Yeah, but next up is me, speaking about Tom Cruise. Who's that? You're about to find out. Have you ever watched Top Gun, Mission Impossible, or Interview with a Vampire? If so, then you know Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise was born July 3, 1962 in Syracuse, New York, but he didn't stay. He had lived in Kentucky, Missouri, Ohio, Canada, and New Jersey before he was 11. Because of the constant moving, he had trouble making friends. It was also because he had dyslexia. To solve this, he learned new sports and played with people. Did you know that he didn't want to be an actor? He liked to wrestle until a knee injury made him quit. Then, a teacher recommended Guys and Dolls, the school musical. He loved the feeling of being on stage, and that is why he is an actor. When trying to be a real actor, he had to get jobs in between other stuff, so he bust tables and loaded trucks. Overall, Tom has had his share of awards. All throughout his career, Thomas Cruz IV has never won an Oscar himself, although movies he's been in have won, such as Top Gun Maverick, which won for editing. Did you know that he has won three Golden Globes for Born on Fourth of July, 1990, Jerry Maguire, 1997, and Magnolia, 2000? He was even no nominated for a Saturn Award seven times, but he only won once. Now, you're probably thinking, if he won so many awards, the movies have to have made a ton of money and recognition over time. 
Did you know that over 15 of Tom Cruise's movies have made a lifetime gross of over $100 million? And in total, his movies have made over $6 billion, but that's just since 2011. Tom Cruise has many famous movies, so I'm sure you've undoubtedly seen at least one. Even with Cruise's success, not all of his roles have been appreciated. For example, in the movie Interview with a Vampire, he plays an evil vampire named Lestat. But since he was an American non-vampire, the public didn't like him. Soon, they changed their minds after seeing the movie. Now, I know you have at least heard of t about Top Gun 1 or 2. Top Gun is about Pete Maverick Mitchell and his quest to become an experienced fighter pilot in the U.S. Navy. But Top Gun Maverick, aka Top Gun 2, is about him teaching a young group of pilots to go on a risky mission. But if those are not your style, then you might like Mission Impossible. It is a spy espionage movie starring and co-produced by Cruise based on a television series of the same name. Now, it's safe to say that Tom Cruise is one of the greatest actors of all time. Now back to us at the studio. Wow, he is very amazing. Speaking of amazing people, here's Cam talking about Cristiano Ronaldo. Sue. Hi, my name is Cam. Who is Cristiano Ronaldo? Ronaldo is an all-star soccer player. He was born on February 5th, 1985. Ronaldo grew up in Portugal. His nickname is CR7. When he was 14, he had surgery due to a heart problem in 2001. Luckily, his surgery was a success. In 2010, he became a father. I have never seen him in real life, only on TV. CR7 plays for an FA Premier League, La Liga, and Serie A. One team he has played for was D Portugal. Cristiano Ronaldo played for Manchester United, Real Madrid, and more. As we are speaking, he is on a Saudi Arabian team. The position he plays is forward. His number he likes is seven. He helped lead Portugal to a fourth place ranking in the 2006 World Cup. Through 2007 to 2008, fans called him the best player in the game. Ronaldo has been a key player for any team he's been on. Cristiano's focus is not only on soccer. In 2012, Ronaldo paid for cancer for a 10 month old boy. Also in 2013, he opened his own museum. He also has donated money to rebuild homes for others. Finally, Sarah 7 is involved with a lot of charities around the world because he knows what it's like to have nothing. He's always looking to give back. As you can see, he, it's not just his soccer talent that makes Ronaldo great. Back to you in the studio. Wowzers, he is very interesting. Messi's better though. Yep, that's right. Anyways, what's your favorite animal? I don't know yet. Here's Brooklyn who's going to try to change your mind. What cat is larger than a leopard but smaller than a lion and a tiger? If you said jaguar, you're right. Most jaguars have tan fur with black spots. They have black rings around the spots. Some jaguars are all black. A jaguar is about seven feet long, including its tail. It can weigh up to 350 pounds. Jaguars are the largest wild cat found in America. When they are born, when, when they are born, jaguars are blind and unable to walk. The mother hides them deep in the forest. They start hunting with their mother when they are three months old. When they are two years old, they leave their mother and go to the rainforest to hunt and live on their own. Jaguars live to about 15 to 20 years old if they in the wild and to 25 years old if they live in the zoo or a wildlife park. Jaguars live mostly in South America and Central America. Most jaguars live near deserts and swamps. They are also amazing swimmers. There are not that many jaguars left. Thousands of jaguars are killed illegally for their fur, claws, and teeth for lots of money. They need, we need to do all we can to keep them alive. Back to you in the studio. Jaguars might be my new favorite animal. Same here, Connor. But do you know what the big apple is? I love apples. How big are we talking? Not that apple. I'm talking about New York. Huh? Let's take it over to Gail and who's going to be talking about New York. If you like places with a lot of history, you should go to New York. Hi, I'm Kaylin, and I'm going to be talking about why you should go to New York. The Apollo Theater is the oldest music hall in New York City. Also, if you like 
Walking, you can go up 1,575 steps to get to the 86th floor of the Empire State Building. In 1931, it opened and it was the biggest building at the time. Broadway is a really popular place in New York. Speaking of popularity, The Lion King is the longest running show in Broadway. Lady Liberty. Lady Liberty is the, one of the oldest artifacts in New York. Emma Lazarus helped to raise money in 1883 for the state. These are all the places with a lot of history. Next, people in New York. Did you know that New York was named after James the Duke of York and Albany? Rob Gronkowski lived there when he was a kid. Lady Gaga lived there. I like music. There are so many other people and I only named three, but let's move on. Fun facts about New York. The state tree is a sugar maple, flower, rose, eastern bluebird, eastern bluebird fish, brook trout, stone gem, garnet, animal, beaver, and song, I Love New York. That, that is just some of the facts. It is the third most popular state. Also, it was the 11th state. The highest point is 5,344 feet, Mount Marcy. The highest temperature is 108 degrees on June 23rd, 1922. The lowest temperature was negative 52 degrees, February 18th, 1979. Those are all the coolest facts and the coolest state you should go see. Back to you in the studio. So that's the Big Apple. Yep. Quick question. Who do you think is the GOAT of football? I'm pretty sure humans play football. No! GOAT means greatest of all time. Oh, I don't know. Who? Well, Paul Hugert is going to share his opinion. Who was Patrick LaVon Mahomes? That's why I'm here. Patrick Mahomes was born September 17, 1995 in Tyler, Texas. He played three sports in middle school, football, basketball, and baseball. In high school, he played those same sports in White House, Texas. In college, he quit basketball and had to choose between football and baseball. This is a tough decision for him because he likes baseball because his dad was an MLB pitcher for the Kansas City Royals. He likes football because he was good at it. He picked football because he wanted to learn more about it. He went to Texas Tech where he might where he met his wife in 2017. He was drafted in the first round pick 10 to the Kansas City Chiefs, backing up Alex Smith. The next year, Alex got hurt, so Patrick filled in. That year, he won a Super Bowl against the 49ers. Not only did he win the Super Bowl, but he earned a Super Bowl MVP to go with it. He also won an Offensive Player of the Year. He is the third youngest quarterback to win a Super Bowl MVP. There's no doubt. Patrick Mahomes has played for six years and won two Super Bowls. They are the Kansas City Chiefs, but they play in Missouri because it's on the border. That's where he won two Super Bowls, and he has won 12 awards, including two Super Bowls, two Super Bowl MVPs, two normal MVPs, an Offensive Player of the Year, two First Team All-Pros, one Second Team All-Pro, five Pro Bowls, NFL Passing Touchdown Leader, NFL Passing Yards Leader, one Sports Illustrated Player of the Year, a Burt Bell Award, a College Sammy Boff Trophy, all in seven years. He is the definition of the GOAT. Thanks, Paul. Maybe Patrick Mahomes is the GOAT. He is. We talked a lot about real things. Why don't we talk about anime? Hi, my name's Isra, and we're going to be talking about anime. The people who started anime are called the fathers of anime slash manga. The, though anime is pretty is very popular, manga always always has more information about the story. And, ma and manga always comes before anime. To figure out the birth of manga, we have to go back all the way to the late 17th century. We have to meet a troublesome guy named Hokusai, the founder of manga. He thought his pictures were was whimsical pictures, but not until Paul Pulitzer gave its boost. Then Okamoto made funny Japanese comics. Tezuka made the first modern anime that we have now. Now if we want to go n know about when anime was made, 
He has to go to 1917 to meet guys named Shimo, Shimokawa Ota, Jana Chikuchi, and Seitaro Kitayama. Though it was a bit cartoonish, since it was made in Japan, it also it counts as anime. Those people we just mentioned were the fathers of anime slash manga and started everything. Where was anime made? All of anime is made in Japan. I mean, that's what makes it anime. There's no country that makes more anime th than Japan. I mean, there are some anime in the world. 90% of them are fan-made, though. Now, let's talk about where anime is mostly watched or is the most popular. There's way too, mu there's way too much on the list, so I'll just list some. India, China, America, and Japan, of course. We talked about where it's made, so now let's talk about why and how it's made. I bet you can guess why anime was made for the money. For the money. M anime was primarily made for the Japanese market. It was also made for reading the government's propaganda. How anime made how anime was made is pretty complicated. It involves storyboard storyboarding, voice acting, character design, and cell production. Overall, anime has come a long way. The art of Japanese comics ha has, uh, has many different influences and, lo and is loved all, around, all over the world. Will you give anime and manga a try? Back to, you, us, back to us in the studio. Anime seems entertaining. It sure is, but do you want to know what else is entertaining? Dogs. Hot dogs? No, like the dogs with four, fur and four legs. My favorite is huskies. Same. Let's learn more about huskies with Kaylee. Looking for a dog to add to your family? How about a Siberian Husky? Siberian Huskies are medium-sized dogs. They have a weather-resistant double coat. The undercoat is soft and dense, while the overcoat is smooth and straight. The double coat helps these dogs handle, handle temperatures as low as negative 58 degrees. Their coat comes in various colors that include black, white, red, and gray. They, need to shed, twice, they shed twice a year, so they will need some grooming. Huskies can grow up to 24 inches tall and can weigh up to 60 pounds. They live from 12 to 15 years old. Four to eight puppies are born at once. Puppies grow until they are two years old. These dogs have a strong sense of gen gentleness and devotion. That makes them wonderful family pets and companions. They are also friendly, gentle, alert, and outgoing. What do you think? Are you ready for a husky yet? The Siberian Husky was brought to Alaska during the Nome Gold Rush in the early 1900s. Huskies live mainly in Alaska and Siberia. They can live in other places but would prefer colder temperatures. Huskies have lots of energy. They need lots of exercise and attention. These dogs are used for sled dog racing. They are muscular working dogs and love going for long walks. So they're great for pulling sleds for long distances. If your family is always up for an adventure and fun, this is definitely the breed for you. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Kaylee, for the info. Last but not least, Maddie talking about the blue-nosed pit bull. Pit bulls have a bad reputation for being very aggressive, but that's wrong. Pit bulls are actually known for being very are known for being one of the most gentle and loving dogs, especially when they are trained properly. They love to be around people and especially children. Which, they, which makes them excellent family dogs. They are great for those families who love outside and exercising because pit bulls have lots of energy. You should exercise your dog for at least 60 minutes every day. Pit bulls are a strong, loyal, obedient, and intelligent dog breed. They cost around $750 to $2,000. The reason why they are so expensive is because of their unique color, rare blue, gray hues, and present not just in the coat but also in their eyes, nose, and sometimes in skin and toenails. This dog weighs anywhere from around 30 to 50 pounds. They have a short coat required low grooming can live up to 8 to 15 years. Socializing your pit bull is just as important as training them. They may not be the biggest of other dogs and animals, but they do get along 
well with humans, especially children. They are strong dogs with incredible tolerance to pain. So even if a child is too rough with them, they won't mind. You should start training them slowly so they don't get scared. If you socialize them as a puppy, they should not have any problems later in life with socializing. With other dogs, of course, you still need to supervise supervise your blue nose pit bull around humans when they are meeting for the first time. As you can see, pitbulls don't seem that bad. I have a blue nose pit bull and a red nose pit bull. And they are great pets. Back to you in the studio. Blue nose pit bulls are so misunderstood. I feel I feel bad. From now on I won't misunderstand pit bulls. Yeah, but now it's time to say goodbye. It's been Ishmael and Potter. And that's New Hampshire News. Tune, Tune in, in next time. time. Cut. Cut. Hello, my name is Yaya. My name is Levi. And welcome Come to, to Best, Best Student, Student News. News. First up, we have Andrea talking about Beyonce. Who is that? Well, that's a question Andrea can answer. Hi, I'm Andrea, and I will be talking about Beyonce. You're probably wondering who she is, so here's all about her. On September 4th, 1981, a star was born named Beyonce. Starting in her singing career, she started a group called Destiny's Child. Destiny's Child started out with four girls, but then one left. Destiny's Child was still a group just with one less person. After a couple of years of being in Destiny's Child, the whole band broke up. Michelle and Kelly quit singing, but Beyonce didn't. Beyonce is now a solo singer with a bunch of hit albums. After Beyonce took a break from singing, and went to, she went to acting. For example, Beyonce voice acted Nala in the real life Flying King. All in all, what an amazing career. Now you're probably thinking, how did she become famous? First, when Beyonce was in the group Destiny's Child, she became the lead singer. Also, Beyonce had a bunch of hit songs from Destiny's Child. Second, in 2023, this year, Beyonce broke the record for the most Grammys in the world. La the last three Grammys that she needed to break the record that she won were from the 2023 album Renaissance. Last, Beyonce was a guest in the movie Austin Powers. She has acted in many other movies, such as The Real Life Lion King, which I already mentioned. In conclusion, Beyonce sounds like a busy woman. Now I know what you're thinking. When did all this good stuff happen? First, in 2000, Destiny's Child began and friendships were made. Not only friendships were made, music was made. Every song that they made that just, would just get better and better. Bills, 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 Shoulder, and Soldier, and Survivor were their biggest hits. Second, her first solo album called Dangerously in Love was one of her hit albums. The song on the album are Crazy in Love and many more. Fun fact, Crazy in Love is the top three of her of her most hit songs. Last in 2013, Beyonce performed the Super Bowl with Destiny's Child. Guess Kelly and Michelle performing right alongside of her, of Beyonce. But this wasn't her only appearance. In 2016, Beyonce did the Super Bowl again with Bruno Mars. All in all, Beyonce is a pretty remarkable and talented person who has become quite a role model to many. Back to you in the studio. Oh, that's who Beyonce is. Yep. Well, next up is Aria talking about wolves. Hi, my name is Aria and I'm here to tell you about wolves. What are wolves? Wolves are mammals that are usually the size of a medium to large dog. Their coats can be gray, brown, white, black, or mixed. They have long snouts with noses that can pick up very faint odors and long bushy tails. Females are usually smaller than males. At birth, pup's eyes are usually blue, but they change to yellow, gold, green, orange, or brown. A wolf sight is well developed and sensitive to movement. On average, a wolf measures from 24 to 37 inches at the shoulder. Occasionally, wolves eat plants, but they usually eat deer, moose, rabbits, rodents, and other large hoofed mammals. The wolf is a distant relative to the dog. As you can see, all of these features make the wolf unique. These are some important times for wolves. Pups are born deaf and blind in the spring and begin to see at two weeks and hear at three weeks. When they are three months old, they can travel several miles, and when they are six months old, they can hunt with the pack. At the age three, they can join the pack or leave. The average lifespan of a wolf is six to eight years. Because of their short lifespan and being hunted by poachers, they nearly became extinct in the 1930s. To prevent their extinction, 14 gray wolves were brought to Yellowstone from Canada in 1995. 
Now there are about 300. This is quite an amazing species that needs to continue being protected. Have you ever wondered where wolves live? Wolves live in northern North America, parts of Europe, much of Asia, and Ethiopia. The biomes they live in are forested areas, grasslands, steppes, the tundra, boreal forests, and deserts. They mostly live in places with few or no people. Sadly, wolves' habitats are being destroyed and there are only about 250,000 wolves left in the wild because of humans. You must remember that we share the earth with animals and we can't keep taking from them. Wolves are very interesting creatures. Did you know that they may travel 30 miles in a day to find food and defend their territories? They can hear another wolf howling from at least four miles away and their sense of smell is estimated to be 100 times keener than ours. An average wolf can run speeds of about 40 miles per hour and can cover 16 feet in a single bound. A wolf it can eat up to 20 pounds of meat at a time and can go about two weeks without eating. When hunting, wolves bite the backside of their prey to weaken it. Even though they may seem solitary, wolves are actually really social animals. Usually there are 6 to 30 wolves in a pack. There are many more wolves, facts about wolves, but you have to come back later to learn more. Back to you in the studio. Wow, I didn't know wolves were endangered in the 1930s. Now next up we have Blake talking about VR. Did you know that the first VR wasn't called the VR? It was called the Seroscope, which was made in 1888. VR stands for virtual reality. A VR is a computer-generated env environment headset with a virtual 3D world. Jordan Lanner was the first person to use virtual reality. The earliest attempt to make VR was in the 1800s. The next big step was in 1955, when virtual reality technology was invented. In 1991, the video game company Nintendo tried to fix issues like lag and delays. They released the Virtual Boy. The Virtual Boy is a wearable 3D video game console. By the early 2000s, many people thought virtual reality was dead. Well, they thought. In 2016, virtual reality's biggest breakthrough came with the Oculus Rift. The Oculus R devices went on sale to the public in 2016. Oculus offers many free games, movies, and videos. Other HMD, which means head mountain display, was released in 2016. It was the HTC Vive. VRs aren't always used for games. Some people practice or train for emergency service like police and firefighters. They can have a practice drill. For students, they can experience places better than books. The U.S. military uses virtual reality for many kinds of training, including which teaches their movement in the air. The prices of VRs are all different depending on the kind of Oculus. The U.S. military VR is $1 million and is the only one ever built. The Virtual Boy is $180 and wasn't a big seller. Most Google Cardboard viewers are less than $25. In 2014, social media company Facebook purchased Lucky's company and HMD for $2 billion. To this day, VRs are about $600 to $700. It's obvious that VRs has changed the way we are able to see things. I can't wait to see the new inventions in the future. Back to you in the studio. Oh my gosh, VR was made so long ago. For sure. Next is Kaylin talking about anime. Hi, this is Kaylin here to tell you about anime. Anime is a TV show watched on many platforms, normally a TV, a phone, or a tablet. It shows viewers about discoveries or magical lives. Let's get into more. Did you know the first ever anime was made in 1917? Just a little over 100 years ago, an anime called Astro Boy was made. Surprisingly, it was popular till the modern days when people stopped watching it so much. Speed Racer is also an old anime, but when I really think about it, it was not made too long ago as it was only made at least 20 to 30 years ago. As you can see, anime has been around for quite a long time. Studio Ghibli is one of the most amazing anime artists I have ever seen. Studio Ghibli is such an amazing artist of anime. The movies he makes are very addicting, especially Totoro, Ponyo, and so many more. Studio Ghibli is the first ever anime I have ever watched because when I was seven, Totoro was playing on the TV and I did not regret watching any second of it. All of the anime made by Studio Ghibli is very, very interesting and fun. Overall, Studio Ghibli's movies and stills are amazing and awesome to learn about. I hope you have a better explanation of what anime is. Anime has been around for more than 100 years, and I could not choose who is the best artist. Okay, back to you in the studio. Wow, that's really cool. Next is Grace talking about Outer Banks. Hi. I'm Grace. Why come to the Outer Banks? 
to see the beautiful sights. One of the amazing sights to see is the Lighthouse Hatteras, also known as America's Lighthouse. Another must see is the tour of the graveyards. If islands are what you like, you have come to the right place. Bodie Hatteras, Kitty Hawk, and one last one is the Core Banks, also known as Cape Lookout. As you can see, the Outer Banks is a beautiful piece of land. Are you someone who likes adventure? If so, come to the Outer Banks. You can go to the National Wright Brothers Museum. Also, you can kayak to many uninhabited islands. If you like to surf, you can windsurf as well. All in all, you have many fun things to do while you are in the Outer Banks. Who comes to the Outer Banks? Visitors come to the Outer Banks to sightsee and do many other things. Giovanni de Verzano um, landed in North Carolina, and yes, he did find North Carolina where the Outer Banks are. The Wright brothers came to the Outer Banks and made an airplane. The first flight was December 17, 1903. As you can see, the Outer Banks is a beautiful place. Back to you in the studio. Ooh, that sounds like something I should add on my summer list. Definitely. Hey, Yaya, do you know who created basketball? No, I don't. Well, I'll tell you in a sec. Hi, I'm Levi, and I love basketball. Something I have always wondered is who created basketball. Luckily, I found out who it was. It was Dr. James Naismith. Who is James Naismith, founding father of basketball? James was born on November 6, 1861, in Almont, Ontario, Canada. He loved sports so much, he even studied them in school. Then he worked in Montreal in an early job, which was before he moved to the U.S. Eventually, he got married and had five kids. Then they all moved to Colorado. He died on November 28, 1939, in Lawrence, Kansas, United States, where he is buried as well. We have to wonder, what would sports be like without him? How do you keep kids busy during the winter in Massachusetts? Well, after Naismith moved to the Springfield, Mass., he got hired at the YMCA. He only had a few weeks to think of an indoor game so that the kids could stay active during the freezing winters. That's when he came up with basketball. He pinned two peach baskets 10 feet up on opposite sides of the room, used a soccer ball, and had 13 rules. From there on, the rest is history. Without James Naismith, basketball would never be the sport it is today. It is only there is only 44 million people that play basketball today. Spalding was the first company to produce a basketball for official use. The NBA, or National Basketball Association, is one of the most popular, league, Euro, popular leagues in the United States. This just makes me think, what would this world be like if James Naismith had never invented the game of basketball? I'll see you back in the studio. That answers that question. Next up, we have Rhiannon bringing a storm. Hi, I'm Rhiannon. What is weather? Weather is what it's like at what it is like outside. It can be sunny, cloudy, stormy, snowy, or windy. Weather only happens up in the in the sky. Let me tell you about some types of weather. Starting off with tornadoes. Tornadoes happen in the central U.S. more than anywhere else on Earth. A tornado is a strong storm that starts when a warm air is drawn from the base and of huge storm clouds. Wind, winds can blow up to 300 miles per hour. A funnel cloud forms when, you, when warm air spins and, and touches the ground. The area where, where they are most commonly found is nicknamed Tornado Alley. A tornado can destroy anything in its path. People's homes, vehicles, trees, and life. What, what should you do if a tornado heads your way? you may get an alert on your device. Lots of t homes have torna tornado shelters where, hey, where, or a basement where the, all the, where the family can stay safe until this danger is passed. Have you ever heard of hail? When, hi when, icy, pellets of, when icy pellets of ice fall from the sky, they are, they, it, it's a hailstorm, also known as an icy shower. Half of half of their size, if it's the size of a plum, it, it can be the size of a plum or as small as a pea. As in a in a cloud, the air at the top of a uh, of a cloud is colder than the bottom. D diving driving through an, a a hailstorm can be very deadly. One large hailstorm stone can can shatter a whole windshield. 
the largest hailstone in the U.S. is the size of a volleyball. Most hail that, fa that falls around the world is small, but when, when it's as large as your golf ball, take cover. Weather that you see almost every day in, the, in, in New England. Well, if there is any, a few or no clouds in the sky, the day will be filled with sunshine. What is, what is a partly cloudy, it, when it is partly cloudy, the sky has between 3 eighths and 5 eighths cloud cover. A windy day happens with, with, with a lot of different types of weather, like thunderstorms, like thunderstorms. What is fog? Fog, what is fog? Fog is a, 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 any type of cloud that forms at, at ground level. When, when you get up tomorrow morning, be sure to check that weather. It may just help you decide if you should go outside or not. Back to you in the studio. So much weather. And now it's Yaya's turn talking about raptors. That's Velociraptors. Rawr. Hi, I am Yasiel, and I am here to report on a pretty amazing species of dinosaur, the Velociraptor. What are Velociraptors? The Velociraptor is a dinosaur that, is, that was part of the Dromaeosaurus family. Most people call them raptors, but I prefer to call them velociraptors. Their name means quick plunderer, which should give, which should give you some idea about their speed. They are only six feet long, but only five feet tall. That's like the height of someone my age. Raptors, believe it or not, only weighed 33 pounds. As a very small dinosaur, it ran on two legs. A long tail will help velociraptors maintain balance and speed. Lastly, the Velociraptor was very smart and had a large, a very large brain that went into action when it was lunchtime. But when was the lunchtime? Raptors were extreme predators. The Velociraptors hunted herbivores and ate meat. This might surprise you, but they also ate and stole their own eggs. These hunters had a very slim body, long arms for reaching, and a long tail for a lot of balance and to control its speed. Claws to pry through their prey and sharp teeth to rip through meat made these species a major threat to others. When and where did the Velociraptors live? Well, Velociraptors lived 80 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. There were three periods, Cretaceous, Terassic, and Jurassic. They died 70 million years ago, which means that they only had a lifespan of only 10 million years. Scientists don't know how they died, but some think it was the inability from the inability to find food. Eventually, the dinosaurs starved to death. The Velociraptors called North America, Mongolia, and Asia home. Today, paleontologists are still digging to learn more about these fascinating creatures. I hope these facts encourage you to learn more about Velociraptors and these fascinating species. Now back to you in the studio. I'm happy I didn't that at that time. Yep, that's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in to watch Best Student, Student News. News. See you later. Bye. Bye.